In front of us here, we see a selection of tools and materials, some of which are readily available and some of which are kind of weird, that we can use to make some simple, rigid drawing tools. At the top, we have a thick stick, just found out on the street, a smaller, thinner branch found in the woods, a goose feather, these are available at pretty much any art or craft supply store, a reed of grass, kind of a nice little flexible thing, a possum jawbone, definitely not easy to find, but pretty cool, some toothpicks you can find at any grocery store, some vine charcoal, that you can find at any art supply store, a little scrap of sandpaper, I think this is 200 grit, that you can find at any hardware store, a nice sharp pair of scissors, and or a multi-tool with a knife, or even just a super sharp kitchen knife or pocket knife. And this is called Viva's Thread. It comes from a fly fishing store, but if you don't have any access to a fly fishing store like the Orvis in North Atlanta or Hunter Banks here in Asheville where I got this, you can certainly use waxed or unwaxed dental floss which is available at any grocery store or pharmacy. If you're going to use dental floss, I prefer to use the wax dental floss because it gives you a tighter grip as you are tying together multiple small materials. It will help keep tension on that thread if you are using something that's waxed. All right, let's get started and see how to make some simple drawing tools. Two of the simplest tools you can make involve the flexible piece of reed grass with a blunt end and some kind of a feather. It doesn't have to be a goose feather, but something that has a nice tip on it will be helpful. To turn the reed into a drawing tool, you really don't have to do anything. It's not quite as absorbent, and so you won't be able to make a long line with it, but you can dip the reed directly into your India ink and immediately start making marks. You can see that the marks are variable depending on how much ink there is on the tip. And as you get further and further away from the beginning of your line, that line will start to peter out because this piece of reed grass isn't able to hold too much ink. But you can see the nice variety of marks you can get from dots, to dashes. You can make hatch and cross hatched marks like so. And you can make a pretty nice variety of line work if you're willing to reload that brush frequently. And by brush, of course, I mean this reed, this drawing tool. So that is the simplest of all the drawing tools that you could possibly make. Next, the feather is a little more complicated, but not much. If you get a feather from an art and craft supply store, they'll usually have a nice, thick, hollow bottom area. Now, you could take this and start to draw with it immediately, like so, but that's not quite the optimal way. The best thing that you can do is to take a sharp knife of some kind and just gently file down the end. Of the feather like so. And you're thinking about um, you know people writing with quills in early European and American history. Well this was that very thing. So you can see as I'm filing it away here it's chipping into the end of the feather ever so slightly and you can even make that process a little quicker by just running something sharp on the inside of it like so and cutting it into a finer point, more like you would see a traditional sort of cartoon drawing of a quill pen. There we go, that's getting there now. All right, let's see how it's working now. I'll dip the feather in the end I'll let it soak in a little bit of ink, and you can see it's already holding ink much better, like a reservoir. And then I'll make my first mark. Oh, a nice thick mark, look at that. 
It holds so much ink. And you can see how different it looks than the marks made by the reed grass. Beautiful. You can also make finer lines. If you drain the excess ink out of the end of the feather first, and then take a pair of sharp scissors or go back to your knife and you can actually trim, cut at a 90 degree angle, excuse me, a 45 degree angle, like so, and you'll get a much sharper tip, just like you can see here. And then I like to go back with the knife and sharpen it up just a little more. So it gets a nicer point on it. And once you have more of that angled cut like this, let's see the difference. I'll dip it in here to my India ink. Oh, such a different line with just a little bit of sharpening. And such a nice reservoir, a nice amount of ink can be held all at once. Oh, and look at that splatter effect there. Very nice. All right, so those are the two simplest drawing tools that you can make. One of them, absolutely for free and with so little labor. And the other one, you can usually pick up an entire pack of feathers, sometimes in super cool colors for 59, 69, 79 cents at any art and craft supply store. Next up, We'll try a few more complicated drawing tools.